So the first thing you want to do is to figure out all the legal admin stuff of setting up your business. If you have no idea about different business structures like sole proprietorships, corporations, LLCs, I would definitely do some research. I'm in Canada and I do have a recommendation if you are in Canada as well and you want to set up a sole proprietorship or a corporation. You can use a service called Owner to set up your business and this is what I used to set up my corporation. Now you do want to look into what are the differences between a corporation and a sole proprietorship. There's a huge difference so make sure you do some research and decide on what you do and Owner can help you register for for a sole proprietorship or a corporation. And I do have a discount code, so check it out below. And if you're super confused about business structures and setting up a business, I would definitely, definitely recommend talking to an accountant or at the very least, find different business owners in your area and ask them what they did with setting up their business. A lot of you might be stressed about how exactly do you collect payments? How do you set up everything? And for invoicing specifically, I would recommend Stripe, Wave, and also so PayPal. So those are the three that I would look into. And you can also use the payment uh, invoicing platform of whatever accounting software you use if you pay for an accounting software like QuickBooks or FreshBooks. If you're collecting credit card transactions, there is a 3.25 plus 29 cents per transaction fee. And this is standard across the board. So don't be scared of credit card transaction fees. It's a very standard cost of doing business and something that you should just incorporate into your expenses. Next thing to do is to decide what you're actually going to sell. You probably already have an idea, but I want you to get super specific on what you're doing. And remember, you can always change it later on, but decide what you're gonna work on at least for the next three to six months. Art and creativity is a very broad term. So I'm gonna list out several ways that you can make money with your art. And right now, if you don't really have an idea of what you can do to make money, you can consider these things. You can sell a physical product, you can mail it out to your customers. So for example, like greeting cards, this is what I started out with in 2018. And if you have a physical product, you can also sell it at different kinds of markets in your area. You can do art commissions. So these are specific custom requests that your customers have requested you to do and you're going to create the work and then you can either mail it or you can meet up with them in person. Another one is on-site art. And this is one of my favorites because it just, you feel so cool. <laughs> you can do digital art and there's actually a lot of ways you can monetize digital art so you can sell the same thing. So for example, like prints on your website or an Etsy shop. By the way, I have thoughts about like selling art on Etsy. So maybe I'll make another video about that. Uh, but for digital, you can also do digital art commissions. And there's a ton of ways you can do marketing, which I will talk about later on how to do marketing for selling your art. Another one with digital art is you could design the stuff and then do print on demand. Next is to host some kind of workshop where you teach people the art that you know how to do. So for me, I actually taught a whole lot of calligraphy workshops. I taught more than 600 people calligraphy workshops in uh, from like 2019 to 2020. 22, I would say, and those workshops were public workshops, but also corporate team building workshops, and they were in person and also virtual on Zoom. I do actually have a video on how to teach workshops, so you can check that out. That one is specifically about calligraphy, but if you want to do art workshops as well, or you want to host like a plant making workshop or cooking class or something, I think that one will definitely help you out. And another way to make money with your art is to become a content creator. So you do your art, you can share it somewhere, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, and you can find ways to monetize your art that way. And with a lot of these ways of making money with art, you can kind of combine them together. So for example, with content creator, you can post about your art, you can show behind the scenes of how you do things, or you can make tutorials. And then you can also sell your art prints on your website, or you can link it to your website and you can get people to request custom commissions from you. Oh, I do want to mention if you are a company in Vancouver or a company in North America, and you want to do a cool team building event, you can definitely still hire me <laughs> to teach a calligraphy workshop in person in Vancouver or on Zoom virtually and I would mail the supply. So I still do calligraphy workshops. Actually, I just came back to Vancouver after seven months in Asia. So I'm back to all my calligraphy stuff and I can teach calligraphy workshops again. <gasps>
Oh, I did. Testing. So I know I just gave you a lot of ideas of how you make money with your art, but when it really comes down to it, I want you to think about what are your goals? Like maybe you could do all of them. Like maybe you have the skills to do all of these things that I mentioned. But for example, if you want to be a digital nomad artist kind of person and you don't want to mail out things or do a lot of things physically, then maybe just bring your iPad around, become a content creator. You could sell prints. You could do custom art commissions, but digital art using your iPad and procreate. And you're going to create a lifestyle that fits your goals. And you're going to decide what you're going to sell based on what your lifestyle goals are. But let's say you want to stay in one location, then you could do a lot of physical workshops. You can do art commissions for people in your local community. You could be part of craft markets and stuff like that. So I really want you to think about how you envision your life and how you envision you being this creative artist making money and build your business around that. By the way, if you've never started a business before, I would highly recommend you check out my business plan template. This is a very, very super simple template that I made for new business owners who want to brainstorm what exactly you're doing in your business. So there's a lot of things for you to fill out target market. And there's some questions for like operational things. So if you're just starting a business, you can download it below. The next thing you're going to do is to decide how you're going to reach out to people AKA your marketing. And there's a lot of ways that you can do marketing as well. So some of the more common ways that you can do marketing are going to in-person networking events, networking your way to getting clients, building a portfolio. So using your website SEO to get people to find you on Google search and then click into your website and then they're going to buy something or request something from you. You could do it through content creation or cold outreach or let's say if you are selling tickets, then you would post your workshop on an event ticketing platform like Eventbrite, and people can just find your event through that platform. Another thing, if you're gonna do event type stuff is to partner with different kinds of organizations that already have some kind of audience or an email list. So you don't have to do so much work going out to find people to sign up for your event. And here's a pro tip that I have for you. When you're just at the beginning stages of starting your business, and I know for a lot of creative and artistic people, you, you kind of want to hide, like you, you want your art to be the main thing and you want yourself to just be in the background. But <laughs> let me tell you, the best way is to actually put yourself out there more and a really good way to start doing that if you're really scared about doing that is to tell your friends okay so for example you're going to catch up with a friend have coffee with them or dinner or something and maybe they ask you what's new in your life and you could say something like okay i have actually just started to think about selling my art and i started an instagram here let me show you my instagram page this is my art telling your friends is a really good way to start practicing telling people about this new business because Friends are always going to be supportive, okay? Another part to that is to actually post about your art business on your personal social media. So on your personal Instagram account, personal Facebook account, your LinkedIn, if you have one, and share it with the world. Your friends and your acquaintances and people who are already in your community are gonna be the first ones to support you. They already know you, they're gonna be supportive. You're not being salesy or anything. You're literally just, telling people about it. You're not telling people to buy anything. You're just sharing about it. Also, if you have a little bit of imposter syndrome thinking, oh my gosh, my art or the stuff that I create is really bad. Hmm. I want you to show a couple people because the thing is we are our worst critic because for example, when it comes to calligraphy, I personally think my calligraphy is very basic and very simple. And I only have one style of calligraphy that I do. And I, I've spent hours and hours and hours looking at other people's calligraphy that have really fancy things and flourishes and advanced techniques and all of this. But the thing is to a regular person who normally reg regular people are going to be your customers, right? Regular people will think your art is amazing. And so when I've sh just shown my calligraphy to friends who don't look at calligraphy all day, they are so impressed. So remember that you are selling to your customer, okay? You are not selling to other calligraphers or other artists, okay? Regular people don't know what 
really advanced art looks like and most of the time they can't tell the difference if something is very simple or basic they're still going to be very impressed with it so that's how i want you to approach it if you are feeling a little bit like an imposter and thinking your art is not good enough i can definitely make a video on how to create a portfolio how to reach people how to network how to create a website and have good seo so if you're interested in any of those leave a comment and let me know what video should i make about how to get clients the next thing is to actually go and do it okay a lot of people miss this step they spend so much time researching and coming up with ideas and making a plan but they're actually not really taking action on the stuff that they planned so actually a lot of the times you know what to do you know how to do it for some reason, you just can't bring yourself to do it. And you know what? A lot of the times, business problems that we have are actually personal problems that we have. So for example, if you just can't bring yourself to post about your art on your social media, it's not a business problem, it's a personal problem. You think that people will judge you or something. And I see so many people getting stuck on not being able to take action because they're scared of something or they are worried about something. And if you don't know already, I actually have opened up some coaching spots. This is gonna be for a very limited time because I'm actually working on a digital product. So I'm not gonna always be offering coaching, but I do have a coaching program available. It's four months long and it's for creatives, artists, freelancers, people who wanna be content creators, people who want to sell digital products. Basically, if you wanna do something similar to to what I'm doing, like if you want to start a calligraphy business, teach workshops, sell digital products, do content creation, or any of these related things, there's a link in the description where you can apply for my coaching. And I'll also link a playlist of testimonials of 30 people I have coached before. And yes, you may not know, but I actually coached 50 creatives and calligraphers from 2020 to 2022. And then I stopped coaching so I could focus more on my YouTube, which is the thing that I really, really wanted to do at that time. A huge part of my coaching is working on the strategy with you, but it's also working on the mindset and helping you gain confidence to do the thing that you want to do and put yourself out there. Before I get into the next thing, I want to give you some quick tips that will really help you start your art or creative business. So if you are worried about pricing, there is a very helpful website that I found. It is Women Who Freelance, and I'll add the link below in the description. Basically, you can see a whole list of people who do creative things and what they charge for their services. Next thing is you might be thinking if you need a website, I would say eventually yes, but you can totally get clients just with social media. And there are a lot of website builders out there. So maybe if you're interested in what I recommend for building a website, let me know in the comments and I can make a video about that one. Something else is I've seen so many Instagram accounts where creatives or artists want to make money, but they never show their face and they literally put a logo as their picture. So I'm telling you right now, do not put a logo, do not put a picture of your art, Put your face at least on your profile picture, okay? And it's even better if you can show up and show people who is the artist behind the work, right? Without the artist, there is no work, there is no art. And I have to tell you, at first glance, when I look at somebody's Instagram account, if I don't really see the face and I just see art, like, it kind of looks like a hobby that they have it doesn't really look that much like a business because here's the thing people like to buy things from people that they like okay so if you're thinking about oh my gosh there is so much competition there are so many other artists out there doing the same thing as me who would buy from me people will buy from people they know and they like and how do you get people to like you the easiest way is to show people who you are. The next thing you wanna do when you're starting your art business is you're gonna figure everything else out as you go. There is obviously a lot when it comes to starting a business. There's a ton of you know different kinds of strategies and ways you can do things, different kinds of softwares you can use, but the important thing is you gotta start now and as you go, you're just gonna learn along the way. That's the fastest way to start a business and also the fastest way to grow a business. So learn by doing and don't always watch 
YouTube videos like these, okay? You need to get off YouTube and actually work on the business. Remember, I'm always here to support you. And by the way, if you wanna work with me one-on-one, -on -one, you can apply, go to the link in the description.